So this is episode two, and we are gonna have some more drinks. Yeah. And we are gonna discuss episode two. Poor Eric Balfour is just in his like classic 90s gray ribbed white stripe with a green stripe across it yep. sweater just being pulled around by vampires. He is like, what the fuck? Cause like at this point, like later on in the show, they're like, everyone acknowledges, they're like, we know we're on a hell mouth. So There's like all this demon. weird activity happens. Vampires. At this point, they don't, they don't have that like preface. Yep. And so it's just kind of like, he's all of a sudden just in a dungeon with a million candles. Like more <laughs> candles. Like we, like, have candles. we have candles. We we set this up. Just kidding, those were there. They have millions of candles. So many Like, fire okay, hazards. here's my question. Like, which vampire goes to the <laughs> candle store <laughs> yeah. and buys 500 candles to bring underground into like, the master's lair and then lights them? And there's just like those like wine bottle candle holders with like years of candles dripping down. Like and wax everywhere. That is what that looks like. My question is, do they only buy them in fall, winter when the sun is down at like 6 p.m. and it's they like can go out deal. and buy them? Do they go to Costco to buy these candles? Like how do they have a thousand candles that they're constantly replacing? And how late is how late is Costco open? Like can we go there when I mean, we were gonna test that theory, we need to go. We need to go and is the sun the down. Yeah. You see it as you're watching and you're like, oh, these established characters that are gonna be best friends. At this point, he's like, this girl I just met, my best friend, and then my other best friend is gone. Is gone. And he's with vampires he's in a best. dungeon. Like that would be, that's Terrifying. essentially like you, me, and Dupree. <laughs> Weird reference. <laughs> essentially me, myself, and Irene. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't know what I would do. What would you do? I mean, if your son was at home, crying all alone on the bedroom floor. Cause, Cause he's hungry. hungry. And the only way to feed him is to sleep with a man for a little bit of money and his dad is gone. I don't know what I would do. Xander's like pretty, he's like a bit apathetic right now. Like he's like, he's upset. And Willow in her true form is just trying her best to figure it out. And Buffy is like, check out these sick things. And so what happens is like Buffy has just saved them and they're coming up with a plan to get Jesse back. But also, Willow and Giles learned what's going on, which is the harvest, right. where the master vampire gives his second in command, Luke, who I always called the assistant master in my own head. I just kind of made that up and stuck with it in grade school. Not a thing. Yeah. Not a thing, but like, works for me. The master gives him the power to suck blood and it gives the master strength. The actor that plays Luke, yeah. we will see again because he does come back as the judge. I think it's because he's just this yeah, big, just like giant actor man. guy. Yeah. yeah, and he works out as vampires and demons. Makes sense. Maybe. And he's probably a stunt guy. So most of this episode is them just trying to figure out how to get Jesse back. Features a lot of really old timey computer. Yeah. Lots of the internet is a brand new thing and we don't know how to use it yet. They really reference that where she's like, But Willow I've... knows how. But what's interesting is they're like, she's like, I hacked into the city's mainframe. And you're like, does the city have a mainframe? Like, it's so unestablished at this point. This is 1997. Like, is Willow they... part of Anonymous? <laughs> she would be now. Yeah, she definitely would. She's gotten into numerous police accounts, um, underground sewer system blueprints. A lot of city plans. A lot of city plans. There are a lot of city plans. Sunnydale needs to up their internet security. Or stop putting things on the internet, because at this point, how useful is it? A lot of people do not like season one. It's such an establishing season. Yeah. Every episode is kind of like a gothic horror, like The Witch. The Frankenstein, the like- The online demon. The internet demon, which I can't wait to discuss. Oh, Xander shows up and he's like, no, I'm coming with you. And that, and that's like an integral part where you're like, okay, so her friends always stand by her. And even in the series where she's like, you're gonna get killed. They're like, no, we're here. And that's what we're doing. And that's why Buffy is a different slayer than the rest. It's like, they're setting up that they are the Scooby gang, which I hate referencing and I hate that term. I, I feel like it's so charming, but I know it's annoying. Yeah. I'm like, if you do know that there's a Slayer, or you are like, we have this one day. So the harvest is like this one day. Just play it cool. 
But just hide out. Don't <laughs> don't cause don't cause any waves. Like just if you know that come you come out that last, last hour, day. last day, last fucking hour, and just like show up and murder. The master knows that like he has this one day to get all the blood of He's all gonna, the like, teens, hoodoo himself, and get himself blue. out of his prison underground and be able to fucking bring hell on earth. Yeah. Then fucking play it cool. Yeah, yeah. Don't come don't, out. Don't. Cause don't a out, ruckus. Don't go out early and be like, oh, let's just fuck with people. Until the night of the harvest. Darla, Important scene. Darla, Darla lit, lighting candle. She lit a candle with another candle. That is how it's done. That's it's her done. job? Is it Darla? Darla's been around for hundreds of years. She's sired? Like, that's the other thing is like, she fucking sired Angel. Angel. And Angelus. Angel is a, Angelus, well not Angelus, Angel, Angel. is around. And like Buffy was gonna go, at, so like Buffy's about to go into the like crypt to find them, and Angel shows up and he's like, "Don't go, I'm afraid." Super. Okay, dreamy. so scenario: you're at Cruz and Tango, and Eric Belfort comes up to you. Cruz and Tango's is a gay bar on Church Street in Toronto. You're at, insert name, of relevant gay bar in your hometown. And Eric Belfort comes up to you and he's like sexy as fuck, so fun. He's like, do, he's lip syncing, he's like doing funny things. He like buys a pitcher and just drinks out of the pitcher as a joke. And you're like, how charming. And then you realize he's a vampire, but he has a soul. Okay. Thoughts? I mean, he's gonna look that way forever. The only thing I could never get with the vampires is about is that yeah. their skin's cold all the time. <laughs> My best like, friend in elementary school had very clammy hands and it stuck with me. No, no, for, thank you. For reason. I don't want to be cuddling a cold body. Like it's a cold like body. It's, it's a corpse. It's a corpse. It's a moving corpse. That's what it is. So, I don't want that. Get out of here. If someone needed to be sacrificed for this show to be a success, it was Eric Belfort, right? Oh, we've learned course. it time and time again. We've learned time and time again. Sacrifice Eric Belfort in a television show, yeah. and you will get a few more seasons. You're gonna like at least two. At least and in this case, several more. Six, six yeah, more. Six more. And I, I 100% attribute that to Eric Belfort. In this episode, Buffy tries to go out, and Joyce is not having it. And Buffy's like, I need to. I need to go out, I'm just doing this thing, I'm making new friends. And she's like, no. And Bob was like, excuse me? And she was like, all of the tapes say that I should get used to saying no. Joyce oh. putting in headphones oh! and listening to oh, audio yeah. recordings. This whole time I thought VHS. No, 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 no. It's, it's definitely cassette tape. She's like on the way, she's like commuting to her job. Driving. In her Volvo. In her Volvo. Oh, and she puts Volvo. on headphones or puts it into her car tape player, tape deck, yeah. and listens to tapes that say, you are a strong, confident mother. You can say no to your daughter. You have to stay it's strong. Important. It's important. And you know what? Good for Joyce. Yeah. If you were that mother and you had that little bratty teen daughter that keeps like not coming she's home for She's a fucking vampire slayer. Not yet. And even if she did, she is like 16, 17. How old is she? She's, she's 15. Young. She's so young. Yeah. Ugh. It's not gonna Parenthood. happen. This episode is dedicated all the single mothers out there who have had to deal with their garbage children. I was garbage for a bit. That was the my, worst. My sister. <laughs> you don't have a single mother. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here, go ahead. <laughs> cut and cut, cut. I had two parents around the whole time, and I once condemned them because I bought a pair of low rise silver jeans, and my dad cried because he thought, this makes me sad. Yeah. My daughter is doing this. I mean. And I was like, fuck you, I'm never. This is to the single this mothers. This is to the single moms out there. Congrats. Um, I, I need more wine. This is such a great scene. There's a song playing at the bronze. And then... And then what happens is Luke and Darla and the group of vamps are going to go somewhere and they're going to kill as many people as possible. And every time that Luke kills and drinks the blood of a human, it is empowering. The vamp, not in a feminist way, in a gross way. The master. And so they're like, where is it gonna happen? Where are they gonna, and, and Xander's like, it's happening. The Duh, bronze. the bronze. Makes a bunch of sense. young teens. Virile teens. With 
young, delicious, innocent blood. They don't even drink alcohol, it turns out. I mean, they the don't. Bronze. I mean, that's a whole other thing the, about the bronze. Don't get, don't get me started. Don't get me started. But they show up to the bronze, and this is like, okay, if we have to pick a scene in every episode, this is our scene, right? And then slowly... Slow motion. Out of nowhere, this group comes out of the dark, and it's like this vampire group. So they walk up, and Darla's like skipping in slow motion. And this reminds me, let's just name off some quick classic slow-mo 90s group down an alleyway down a hallway doesn't matter down a way scenes it's like you know, my favorite slow-mo cool 90s walk is in the craft when all four witches are slowly walking and i think garbage is playing of course, of course garbage, garbage is, is playing. playing and it's like they are bad ass luke literally grabs all these teens and just starts feeding off of them and the it's giving the master side. more power Feel i'm it. making the screen Andrew ripple is Rip. playing in the background Feel i this. am the phantom of the opera and there is vibrating Something. Something! And yeah. I'm gonna release myself from this prison that I was created in <laughs> from 60 years ago when I first How came long? to this How shore. How long has he been in this dungeon? 60 years. They said it earlier. <sighs> and this is Luke. I can feel the master's power <laughs> growing. It's so true. So the way the episode ends is Buffy fools Luke by saying, oh, it's sunlight, bitch, and throws a something through the window and it makes a light shine through the window and Luke thinks that it's the sun and yeah. then she distracts him and kills him and stakes him and then it's like, oh, just another day in Sunnydale. And guess what? Buffy's ready to fight for the rest of her life. Yeah, she did it. She, she succeeded. 